that there's no football this weekend with the Premier League postponing all fixtures. And maybe there's not going to be any Premier League next weekend. So it gives us the opportunity to sort of take a step back and assess. And what I want to do in this video, and I think it's going to be a really interesting video, is take a look what I, what I think is Ten Hag's best 11 so far. We've seen the first 11 play. We were, what, six games into the Premier League season now. We've seen the second 11 play against Real Sociedad. I think we've got enough games now to make a fair judgment on who his best starting 11 is. That's what I'm going to do in this video. I'll run through every single position and explain my reasoning for all of them. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. I'd love to have you as part of the community. It's growing every single day and I'd love to see it continue to grow as the season hopefully gets better and better and better. You hit the notification bell. You get a ping every time I go live too. Let's dive straight into it, right? Here's the whole lineup. We've got every single midfielder up there. We've got attackers down there. We've got defenders down here. Now, the first one I don't really have to tell you about. We don't have to really have have conversation about it. He's not used anybody else. David De Gea is Eric Ten Hag's best choice currently at in goal. And I think that's going to change. I believe that will change. I don't think De Gea is going to be here in a couple of years. I've maintained that. I hope he improves in playing out from the back as the season progresses. Manchester United in the first two games, we just could not do it. And then in the, the four games since, we switched to a more pragmatic approach. De Gea has been kicking it long. And that's not what Ten Hag wants overall. De Gea is going to have to really improve in that if we're to get better and better at playing out from the back with the ball. But in terms of defenders, let's start off at centre-back. And let's start off with this man here. Rafa Varane goes straight in there as the first choice centre back. It's been great to see, if I'll be completely honest. We've been waiting long enough. It feels like it anyway. We won in Champions League Varane last year. We got UEFA Conference League or just injured Varane. We just didn't get Varane. This year, alongside Martinez, spoiler alert, Martinez is in this team. Who could, who could have seen that coming? Mark, Varane's just looked much, much better. Looks so much more comfortable on the ball. Decision making's good. He, aggressive when he needs to be i think the partnership of, of martinez is bringing out the best in rafa varan and it's good to see but i mean i know he's not the captain on paper but this bloke here and i knew that i would love this guy i really did why i defended him so staunchly at the start is why i made such a hype when we signed him because i could i could see the general that he could become at manchester united and we've we've seen that immediately his impact on this United team has been absolutely phenomenal. And it's only going to grow and grow and grow. Now, I really could see him becoming captain before the end of the season. Bruno Fernandes, I think, is doing actually a decent job at captain right now. But in terms of the first captain of the club, that's Harry Maguire. And he's not the captain of the club anymore. He never really has played like the captain of the club. Martinez embodies this new, this new edge to United. This new United with a backbone. With some fight. And I'm going to start throwing out the cliche words, but they all completely apply because Martinez has brought that into the team. And that is, that is the best our centre-back partnership has looked in. Uh, you'd have to go back a long, long time. You really, really do. And in terms of fullbacks, there really are just two outstanding choices as well. This lad has been not equal. I wouldn't say equally as impressive as Martinez because I think Martinez is on a different level altogether, but he's right there. He's right there alongside him. I think Manasseh's impact has been fantastic. He came to Manchester United and he was second choice. And within, what, the space of a few games, he's established himself as Manchester United's first choice left back. And Luke Shaw getting injured probably uh, helped that, but his performances are what's helped it. Again, he needs to improve in his overall positioning. Yes, I think if we were to take a look at this, we have to say that Manasseh, he gets caught out a little bit too much up here. Leaves a little bit of space in behind. But no doubt he'll improve on that as the season goes on. But I just think just the, uh, the early impressions of Manasseh have been absolutely fantastic. And he's in that team. And so is Diogo Delo. I think, I mean, it's either him or Scott McTominay as to who the most improved player has been at Manchester United so far in these early games this season. But Diogo Delo has really put uh, a lot of doubters... The rest, he's changed. He's certainly changed the narrative, in, certainly for me as well, in terms of what he's capable of. I think defensively, his positioning has improved a lot. Going forward, I think he always offered something, but he's he seems to be rounding his game a lot more. And he seems to be thriving off playing alongside this bloke, playing alongside this bloke. And I'll tell you what, that back four 
that back five, it's just, it, it's the best it's felt in a long time as a, as a cohesive unit. We're not just talking about individuals here. We're not just talking about De Gea's shot stopping or, or Varane's uh, ability or, or Martinez's warrior side to his game or, or, or Malasia's recovery or Delo's attacking play. We're talking about a cohesive defensive unit. That's, it's been a long time since we've been able to say that. But that, for me, is quite easily Manchester United's best back five. And I think the conversations are really easy when it comes to midfield as well. And I'll be honest, man. When we signed Casemiro, if you had told me that only a few, only like six or seven games later, we would be talking and, and singing the praises of a player who's absolutely dominated in defensive midfield. He looks like a powerhouse. He's using his physicality. I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said Scott McTominay. I would not. Fair play to you, man. And keep it up. I, I don't want this to be a flash in the pan. I think there was a couple of games last season where I thought McTominay. I was like, ooh, what's this? You can play defensive. Well, I haven't seen that before. But it feels different. He's, he's building. Eric Ten Hag is putting his trust in Scott McTominay. And Scott McTominay is absolutely delivering the performances that warrant his place in this team. And there's no way he gets touched in this starting eleven at the moment. In the same way that there's absolutely no chance this man gets touched either. Christian Eriksen, again, in the same way I'm surprised that Scott McTominay has, has had the impact he's had. If you had told me that Eriksen would be playing as much as he would and be having the sort of impact that he is having, I wouldn't have believed you. But Christian Eriksen really has filled the void that Frankie de Jong was supposed to fill. And he's going to be so central to Manchester United, not just literally, but so central to how we played this season. Everything's going through him and then through Bruno, because without him last season... I mean, spoiler alert as to who's going up here. I'll speak about him in a minute. But every time you receive... Bruno always had to drop into that Ericsson position to try and then start something. But when he did that, what happened? There was a huge space there. There was hardly anybody for him to pass to. So we had to go for Hollywood passes over the top. That midfield three is really, really, really working as an actual proper unit. Bruno, I think, has found his position. And not just he's found his position. We've known, that's, we've known that's his best position. But he's found a midfield that offers the balance that's required. And that's the key thing about this defence. You've got the, um, the complementary partnership of Varane and Martinez. Martinez is somebody who's going all out. He's headbutting you and then he's, he's doing a people's elbow from the top rope. Where Varane is sitting there with a glass of red wine and a cravat. He's trying to calm things down. He's trying to hype things up. And as a balance, it works well. It's not like Varane's not capable of the hype. It's just he plays a little bit differently. The low and Malasia, they balance well on the full, in the fullback positions as well. And in midfield, that really is a balanced midfield. McTominay, that ball-winning, physical presence, feeding Ericsson. Ericsson, the playmaker from deep. Bruno, the playmaker from this position. You've got two playmakers playing in two separate positions and it's making United so much more coherent. Certainly the Premier League. Well, we won't speak about what's going on after that. But going forward, I've definitely got Jadon Sancho in this team. But Jadon Sancho has been a little bit shaky at the start of this season. I think it would be fair to say that, right? You can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But I'm going to put Sancho down as our best option on the left wing. I think we need to see a bit more from Jadon Sancho. He was, he was sexy in, in the preseason. He really, really was. I really liked how he was playing. The, the confidence that he seemed to be having. I want to see Sancho just up his levels a little bit more. But in terms of the, the, the dynamics of the front three, I think Sancho adds a lot. And I'll tell you who adds a lot to this team now. And that's Anthony. Because with Anthony in this, in this team, this team makes sense now. This team's got so much more balance. It, we, the shape of it, is much, much better because we've got a true out-and-out -out right winger, not just somebody who would rather play on the left wing, playing on the right wing, which is what we've done for so long. Anthony, even Anthony Langer played better on the left than he has been on the right-hand side when he played against Real Sociedad. Anthony will just make this area his. Uh, that's where he's going to play. You know where his heat map's going to be. His heat map's going to be all down there and around about there. He's cutting inside or he's going up there. Anthony is... I would say he's predictable in the fact that you know he's going to play on the right-hand side, but completely unpredictable in the fact that you don't know what he's going to do. And it makes him a very, very dangerous player. But for me, Anthony for sure goes on that right wing. And it only leaves one spot. And that 
is, of course, Manchester United's centre forward. And we've got three options down here. Now, Martial may well come into this position. But I think there's only one choice at the moment. And Marcus Rashford, now his two goals against um, Arsenal came when he actually moved onto the left wing. I'm putting Rashford down here as a centre forward. But in reality, we're not really particularly operating with a true number nine. Rashford's going to be dropping into these positions. Ra it's going to be like a mobile front three, a dynamic front three that can switch and, and chop and change when they need to. Rashford can go on the left and Sancho can play through the middle. That probably won't happen. But for me, looking at how Manchester United have played this season, what we've learned, I think our starting 11, it feels quite set. The strongest starting 11 feels quite set. The back five there of De Gea with Madisea and Delo, Varane and Martinez as the two centre-backs. A midfield three of McTominay, Eriksen and Bruno. And that really, really is working very well. I'm, by the end of the season, in, in, uh, in a month or two's time, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a conversation that we're having, that Casemiro has established himself and pushed McTominay out of the team. But as it stands, you have to hand it to him. McTominay, he deserves his spot there. Eriksen, I think we'll be talking about him in that position all season. Same with Bruno. Now, I say there's a question about the left wing. I say there's a question about the centre forward and who plays there and who's going to be in our best 11 come the end of the season. I think Anthony's going to make that right wing his own, though. That is our best starting 11, in my opinion. No Ronaldo, no Maguire, no Lindelof, no Shaw, no Casemiro, no Fred. What do you think? You let me know what you think in the comments below. But I think, as I said, we're no Premier League this week, and it's a good opportunity for us to take a step back and have a debate about what you think the strongest team is. That's my strongest 11. You can let me know what yours is in the comments below. Take it easy.